Hi, everybody. I want to talk to you today about MacBook, specifically about a MacBook that was fixed by this guy. This is Brad, Brad from iPad Rehab. Brad, you if you've been to our course, you know that Brad is, in fact, real. But from YouTube land, there's a doubt. You know, who is this Brad guy? Here's Brad. This is as much Brad as you're going to get to see on YouTube. Uh, so this is the back of Brad, and Brad is our MacBook specialist. So he was once a former iPad Rehab Practical Board Repair School student. He's local to Rochester, so I hired him because he was so smart, and he's been working here for a couple of years, and he fixes most of our MacBooks, and he fixes our uh, Nintendo Switches and game consoles and, you know, iPods and weird devices and, you know, vacuum cleaners and stuff that people bring in. And Brad did a really cool fix this week on the worst problem ever, intermittent MacBook faults. And first of all, don't bring us any more intermittent MacBook faults. Intermittent problems are the worst. Intermittent problems are hard to fix because did you fix it or did it just start working again? But Brad fixed one and he, uh, I, th I was like, this should be, a, this should be something we put on YouTube. No way, Brad is not going on YouTube. He's not doing it. So I suggested that maybe Brad could have a spokesperson, right? Like maybe a little spokes dog. So after my dog underdog passed away a couple of years ago, I got another pug, June the pug, who hasn't been on the channel. And I asked June if she would agree to tell the story of how Brad fixed this MacBook. And June said yes. So I, so I had June spend the day with Brad, and Brad told June all about how he fixed the MacBook with the intermittent fault. And now, here she is. Let's dig her up. June, you ready to be on YouTube? Are you going to fix a MacBook? Here's June the Pug. June the Pug. All right, June, you're a little bit over there. Can you not eat this microphone? How are we going to do this? Oh, yeah. Let's turn it. Let's turn it like this so that everybody can see June. I think we moved this camera over a little bit too much. All right, June, you got this. All right, June, do you remember talking to Brad about the MacBook today? Do you? Here, stand up. Do you remember? Do you remember talking to Brad about the MacBook? Do you remember? What did he tell you? Did he tell you how he fixed it? What did he do first? He said that there was an intermittent short. Can you tell us where it was? Here, let's have you kind of scoot back so that maybe you can look at the camera a little bit this way. All right, so June, you've got to walk us through this because only you know the secret of how Brad fixed this MacBook. All right, we'll try to, let's try to, well, June, do you think MacBook repair is boring? Do you want to go to sleep? Is it your bedtime? You don't like this? Do you like MacBooks? Do you want to fix MacBooks? Okay, we'll see. All right, let's see if I can, see if I can make this work. Uh, let's try to figure out this camera. All right, so I don't know if I can make that work or not. We'll go with that. All right, here's the MacBook. Dun, da, da, da. Let's see, how do we turn the MacBook on? Do you remember this MacBook? Is this the one you fixed with Brad? All right, we'll see if she can remember. All right, so this is a, it's an older MacBook. This is a MacBook Air, but it's one that is really well described. It's the good old 8200165. And let's see if we can get it to turn on. All right, Junie, can you tell us how to fix it? Mm, maybe we can. I think I'm going to need a charger for this MacBook, possibly. I don't know. We'll have to take Brad's word for it. All right, let's jump into the story of how did Brad fix the MacBook. All right, so what should we do first? Should we pull up the... Oh, I hear a fan spin. Okay. Eey. All right. Should we... Oh, I hear a chime. Oh. I see an Apple logo. Do you guys see the map? There it goes. MacBook is working. Charger's plugged in. Okay. 
So the story of this problem started with Brad taking apart the MacBook. Is that right? Is that what he did? All right. And he looked at the board. So the board is installed and working. So I've got a sample board. Can you tell us exactly where the problem was? Was it one of the ports? Do you want to eat a MacBook? All right. Do you know if the ultimate problem was C5021? Was that it? I think that was it. Was it C5021? I think so. All right, so let's see what is up with C5021. So let's jump in at C5021 and see what does it do. Let's see if we can find the... Let's find a PDF. All right, let's get rid of that. Here we go. There it is, C5021. What are you doing? Are you gonna Are you gonna lay down? Okay, very good. All right, C five zero two one. All right, June's found that MacBook repair is too boring. Here, can I scoot you back so we can have a little bit of room? Is that cool? There you go. There. No, it works. It works great. All right, C five zero two one is a capacitor, and what does it do? This is a super weird find. I don't think I would have ever found this. So C5021 ended up having a partial short to ground. And Brad found this because he just started measuring all the things after doing the normal stuff that you would do. So this is a MacBook that came in with a complaint of it didn't turn on. And so he found that he couldn't get it to declare that problem, that it worked totally fine. And so he would spend a long time trying to get the MacBook to declare the problem. And then one day it didn't turn on anymore. And the note the guy sent said that he had tried a new charger and it didn't work. He reset the RAM and the keyboard, nothing. And he opened it up and all he managed to do was to break the wire to the speaker internally. So that also needed to be replaced. And I believe that it also needs a new battery which is why it is still here. So Brad spent a long time with this board and he did find that there was some minor corrosion on the board. And I believe that Brad, did he replace the SMC? Do you remember? Did Brad replace the SMC? Did he? Do you remember? Do you know? SMC? Yes or no? I'm not sure that June really, I don't think you were paying attention that much to Brad. All right, so... Uh, he either reballed it or replaced it. I'm not really sure because I didn't hear this story firsthand. And he found after a lot of probing around when the, the MacBook wouldn't turn on that it had a fault at C5021, which was partially short to ground. Who finds stuff like that? So what does C5021 do? So maybe this will help you if you're troubleshooting a MacBook that doesn't turn on intermittently, then something like this might be the reason why. So that's why I wanted to dive in. So what is it? C5021. So it is a capacitor. And like most capacitors, it has one side on ground. So one side is on ground and the other side is stabilizing the voltage for this very important line. PP3V3S5. A VREF SMC. So VREF, a reference voltage of some sort. But for what? So this is a positive reference voltage that is connecting here the SMC to this other chip. So let's follow this. PP3V3 S5 A V REF. Let's see if we can type that in. PP3V3, and we're just gonna follow it along. Let's see if we can figure out what does it do. June, have you gone to sleep? She's snoring. All right, so we're going to follow this along. And it only goes to one other place, and that's over here to this chip, U5110. And U5110 has a really important job overall for MacBooks, these older MacBooks, to boot up. 
and its job is to produce this one output, which is this guy, smc underscore reset underscore l. So smc reset low is a line that has a normal voltage of 3.3 all day, every day. So it's normally high. And the little l means that its signal is when it goes to a zero, when it goes low. So this line is required to reset the SMC periodically. Otherwise, it stays at 3.3. You can get problems when, let's say, SMC reset is held low and it can't come up to 3.3 volts. So if it's held low because it's always, you know, short to ground somewhere on SMC reset low through U5110, for example, water damage, then that's going to cause a problem where the MacBook is not going to be able to turn on. At the same time, if it stays high and if it can't be pulled down, then that can cause another problem. So this, this is where the sort of intermittent aspect of this problem happened because the problem wasn't SMC reset L. It was this other reference voltage. So PP3V3S5A VREF. So what is AVREF doing? AVREF is uh, pinging this chip on a line called REF OUT. So REF OUT is probably a reference voltage that U5110 uh, needs to be able to generate SMC reset and pull it low. Maybe, you know, or maybe REF OUT is just an unused pin on U5110, in which case it can't just kind of float along at whatever voltage, even if the chip isn't using that pin or the designer's not using that pin, then it has to maintain at least a stable voltage that can't kind of go squirrely. So what was the problem? Well, because this reference voltage is depending on the capacitor C5210, I think that's what it was. Was it C5210? No, C5021. Wake up, Pug. You're, you have one job. One job is to tell us how Brad fixed this MacBook. You are possibly less able to do YouTube than Brad, which is I find very hard to believe. Oh, now I've offended her. I'm sorry. I know you're just a dog. You're doing the best you can. Okay. Did she, did she walk off the screen? Oh, yes. She has left. Come on, June. Come on back. There you go. All right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called you incompetent at YouTube. I apologize. You're doing the best you can since you are a dog. But let's continue with the story. So the capacitor, when it was partially short, so it's not always allowing its voltage to go to ground, but at times it will. And that's going to make that reference voltage kind of do this. And so that's a pretty intermittent fault because most of the time U5110 is fine and is able to pull SMC reset to zero or let it be 3.3 and do its job as normal. However, now and then, it just got confused because the reference voltage that it is using is wobbling around because the capacitor C5021, C5021 was partially short to ground. That is really an incredible find. So well done, Brad. He replaced C5021 and now the MacBook is back to normal, except for the fact that it needs a new battery. Other than that, so that board now in our known good housing is working just fine. And back in its own housing, it needs a little bit of speaker work, needs a battery and some other stuff. But it's going to be on its way to going back and being a perfectly working MacBook. All right, so let's go ahead. And if you don't have these schematics, let's take a look on the board so that we can see exactly how you, if you're working on one of these older MacBooks, can just kind of skip ahead and see where where is my C5021. Uh, on the board. So here it is, C5021. This is the capacitor. Do you see it? It is near to the SMC chip itself. And here it is. And you can see that how would it come to be this way? Brad had said that he had seen some signs of very mild water damage around the SMC. And so therefore, it's probably this C5021 got damaged by that water, even though it looked perfectly fine. 
So you never know on all of these sort of surrounding the SMC components and on the components that are surrounding that U5110, you can just replace those to rule those out or get like Brad and start measuring the crap out of stuff. And you can find weird things. All right, so where on uh, the board is it? Right here. Let's take a look um, at a board itself so that you can find it even if you don't don't have flex board view, which is from Paul Daniels, and you should absolutely go buy it. All right, so we have, it's this guy. See it right here. So here's your SMC. June, do you see the SMC? Do you remember it? Brad showed you every single one of these things. I, I know he did. All right, let me just make sure it's that one up at the top. Yep, there is, oh, no, it's not. It's the one below that. So there's the, um, row of three resistors and it's the one by itself so there's look for this row of one two three resistors near the smc and it's this guy right here yeah june thanks for letting me know that i was pointing out the wrong capacitor it's not that one it's this one c5021 there you go all right that's it looks absolutely perfectly fine on this board here do you have fleas? You better not have fleas. You're definitely not coming home and sleeping in my bed if you have fleas. I don't know where you would have gotten fleas. Okay. All right. That's June the Pug's first MacBook repair. I'm not really sure she was all that helpful, but she certainly is cute. And I wanted her to do her very own YouTube stream because I, if you have any other suggestions on how we can get Brad to do his own macbook streams let me know because macbook board repair is super fun super interesting and brad's really good at it all right uh let me check in and see is this even working uh yeah that could cause issues um hi from brazil cam focus is a bit off uh well we had to brighten it up so that you could see june because her face is super dark and she just tends to go to sleep I don't think we can fix the camera focus. All right. Okay, June, did you have fun doing YouTube? Are you ready to go home? Do you want to go home? Do you want to fix a MacBook? Do you want to fix a phone? Do you want to go to bed? Do you want to go to bedtime? I was really sad. I read about Noodle the Pug. Isn't that sad? Yesterday. Oh my gosh, so sad. June still has a long life ahead of her. All right, that's it for this stream, and I hope that you guys find a way to encourage Brad to tell us to, to, to do some more MacBook stuff on this channel because he's really good at it. This was a great find. I never would have measured all this stuff and probably never would have found it. would have given up. All right, that's it. We'll see you next time.